mean, why wouldn't it be good? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. Today is Friday. It is grocery day here and today I am trying to avoid buying this. So this is what I've been buying to sweeten and cream my coffee and it does have a lot of junky ingredients in it. So in the spirit of $50 February and using things from our farm, I'm going to be making goat's milk caramel. It's called cajeta, but Instead of using the sugar that the recipe calls for, I'm gonna see if it works well using honey. So rest assured that if I've posted this video, it means that it worked. You don't have to watch the whole thing only to learn that it didn't work out. So follow along with me and you'll learn how I did it. A lot of cajeta recipes have ingredients like vanilla and cinnamon in them as well, which I think are really awesome additions. I'm gonna stick to just basic caramel because I pretty much want to stick to using the, the ingredients that I can procure off of my farm. So the recipe calls for four cups of goat's milk. You can use store-bought cow's milk. I think it's technically not cajeta at that point. It's dolce de leche, but it's the same process. So you can use store-bought cow's milk if that's what you have access to. And I'm going to take two cups of that four cups and mix in half a teaspoon of baking soda. So baking soda is one of those free allowables in the $50 February challenge. We can use as much baking soda as we need during the whole challenge. And I wondered if I could make caramel without it. And it seems like you could, but the purpose of the baking soda in the cajeta recipe is to help achieve a smoothness. A lot of times with milk, when you heat it up, it has a tendency to curdle, and that's because the milk is acidic, believe it or not. Many milks are acidic, and goat's milk can be more acidic than your standard cow's milk. So adding in the baking soda helps balance out that pH and helps the milk not curdle just because it's so acidic that it does so when heated. So I've mixed in half a teaspoon spoon of baking soda into half the amount of milk and I am going to add this plus one cup of honey into a very large pot. You want to work with a large pot. If you've ever put baking soda and vinegar together you know that that's kind of a volatile combination because the acid reacting with the baking soda makes a whole bunch of bubbles and so our milk in here is going to bubble a lot more than it normally would if I just was simmering some milk on the stove. So I wanna have space in the pot that allows those bubbles to occur without bubbling over. Okay, recipe that I'm gonna link in the description box below it says to heat everything up to a medium high and to stir as it heats up. Once the bubbling reaction of the baking soda and milk kind of subsides, you can add the other two cups of milk and bring the mixture back up to a boil. I forgot to mention too that when you're working with milk on the stove, it's pretty important to use a heavy bottomed pot, especially in recipes like this, where you're going to be heating the mixture for quite a while. It just allows for a more even heating and believe it or not, it kind of insulates the milk itself from the direct heat source and it can prevent scalding and burning. So if you had a heavy bottomed pot, that's the one I would use. I always use my enameled cast iron pots. Some people don't like to use enameled cast iron pots, but I've always done it and I have never, I've never had a problem with heating my milk and cooking things with milk in my enameled cast iron. So I've got a pretty decent simmer slash boil going on right now and I'm going to want to keep this up. So the whole idea in order to create a nice thick caramel is to condense the milk down by basically allowing the moisture to evaporate. And the same thing is going to condense the honey down and create a nice thick candy-like texture. So right now the bubbles are very liquidy and they're popping really easily. As things condense down, the bubbling might get a little bit violent and could even splash hot caramel out of the pot and onto your face. So be very careful and absolutely 
play with the temperature a little bit because you don't want it to be boiling super crazy and you also want to avoid burning. I'm gonna stir every once in a while and as things start to thicken up, I'm gonna start stirring it more and more frequently because as it thickens up, it has more of a risk of sticking to the bottom and burning. But I'm already starting to get a little bit of a caramel color, which is really exciting to see. And also there's a benefit to using a wide pot versus like a big tall pot because the surface area on the milk is greater and in theory things should reduce down quickly, more quickly than they would if you had a smaller surface area on the top of the milk for the moisture to escape. It's actually been less than 10 minutes and the type of bubble or the type of pop that the bubbles are giving me are already different. It's less of a quick airy pop and more of a rolling thick pop to the bubble. And so I know that this caramel is thickening up. So I think this is gonna work. So it's only been, it's been less than 20 minutes since we started reducing everything down. And I have another different stage of bubble <laughs> that I wanna show you. This is a lot more crackly as it pops. I can tell that the mixture is getting much, much thicker. And we're probably getting decently close to the time where, because of what I wanna use this caramel for, I may remove it off of the stove. What I'm essentially looking for is I have to store this in the refrigerator. This is gonna be stored in the refrigerator when all is said and done. And I still want to be able to take a spoon to it in order to place it in my coffee without having to reheat it again. So I want to keep that in mind um, that it is going to thicken up further as it cools just on the counter and then it's gonna thicken up even more in the refrigerator. So if I wanna be able to spoon it out without needing to heat it up, then I probably need to remove it soon. So while I am testing out the thickness for myself, I am gonna turn off the heat just so it doesn't cook down much more as I'm kind of making my decision on where I'm at. I have this little plate here that I placed in the freezer and what I'm gonna do is dip up a little bit of this caramel and place a drip or two on the center. See that? I'm gonna place this back in the freezer just to chill it down quickly and decide what I think about the texture, but already you can tell it's not drippy, so. And so if we are truly done, which I think we are, that only took 20 minutes. Far less than the two hours that the recipe says, but again, if you wanna take it down to like a consistency where it is really thick and almost taffy-like, you'd wanna go much, much further, but I think, I think I'm done here. So it's only been a couple minutes since this was in the freezer. And you can tell the consistency here. It's lovely. That is absolutely lovely. And I'll be able to spoon this out of the jar, no problem. So let's jar it up. So it's very normal and common for me to make messes in the kitchen. We are hoping that we spill a very minimal amount of caramel while transferring it to the jar. So I'm assuming that this is going to be enough. This is a pint and a half jar from Ball and I have this metal uh, canning funnel here. So the caramel is still really hot. I don't think I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator just yet, but I wanted you to see the texture on the top of the caramel. So you can kind of understand what I was going for as far as the texture goes. As the last drips of caramel fell on top of the caramel in the jar, they've stayed kind of suspended on top of the caramel and they haven't exactly melted down in yet. So this is the kind of thickness and texture that I was after for my purposes. Okay, so it's several hours later at this point. So the caramel is good and cool and this is gonna be awesome. It's just like opening a fresh jar of peanut butter you can kind of see it moving around in there a little bit. So I don't think we're going to have any troubles digging this out with a spoon. Got to get my coffee. Goodness. That spoons out very well. So let's see how well it dissolves in coffee. Moment of truth.
I'm gonna try to show you the bottom of this cup here. That's why I did it in a clear cup so we could see what was going on. You see in here, we're getting a little bit of milk solids here collecting at the bottom of the cup. It's probably not the biggest deal. When I've made cajete in the past with sugar, I don't remember it being this kind of texture. Um, it might be fluffier due to the honey. Let's see how it tastes. Ooh, hot, hot. Ooh, it's hot, but it's delicious. So I have not been a fan of honey in my coffee. Honey and milk is not, it's just not something that I've ever gotten into. Some people really love it. But this, the caramelization adds a really nice, toasty, nutty warmth that really, really takes the honey and the milk to the next level. And it's really just, you know, adding the baking soda and doing that heat processing. So this is a game changer for me. These little milk solids on the bottom, I haven't gotten to them yet because I haven't reached the end of my coffee, but I don't imagine they're gonna be too unappealing. Yeah, you know, uh, like lately I've been having that, that store-bought creamer with sugar in my coffee. And I think with this, I'm able to cut out both, which is super awesome and much, much better for me. It's worth a few little milk solids in the bottom, I'm sure. And this is not the only thing that I can use this for by a long shot. So down here, I have some apples in a little bowl and we're gonna spoon out some more caramel. It's a lot like the texture of natural peanut butter, if you know what that's like, but airier. It's not as heavy as peanut butter at all. The honey, it just takes it to the next level. It's so hard to describe. The flavor is so much more complex than any caramel that I've made before, even the cajete that I've made before with sugar, and it's got to be because of the honey. Oh, this is great. Taste test with another very practical application. I mean, why wouldn't it be good? <laughs> it's delicious. I'm really glad that this worked out. So I wasn't sure that it was going to. I did a little bit of Google searching for a recipe where someone had done this with honey in the past and I didn't come up with anything. I saw a few threads where people said, yeah, theoretically it should work, um, but no one had actually confirmed that this does work. Honey, goat's milk, caramel. It does work, so spread the word and we'll see you back here soon.